Okay, example two, simplify rational expressions. I've got a rational expression, and I'm first going to look to see if I can factor my numerator and my denominator. Does my numerator have a greatest monomial factor? And it does, 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. My binomial will be b plus 4. Denominator, greatest monomial factor, 7. Binomial, b plus Four. Oh, happy day. Step two, let's look to see if there are excluded values. So I'm going to look at my denominator. The reality is I could have done my excluded value with the 7b plus 28, but it sure is obvious with the b plus 4. So I know that my excluded value is that b cannot equal uh, negative 4. Okay. So now let's go ahead and reduce. Okay, we're gonna simplify that rational expression. Two and seven, any common factors? No. Now let's look at b plus four over b plus four. I want you to think of that as a package. The expression of b plus four, it's all or nothing. B and 4 are both add-ins. They are not factors. So we have to take that whole quantity and reduce, or we can't do it at all. Well, we do have a B plus 4 in the numerator, and we have a quantity B plus 4 in the denominator. So my answer is going to be 2 sevenths. B cannot equal negative 4. Okay, let's try another one. X squared minus 6x minus 16 over 8 minus x. We could do our excluded value right now since it's, it's only a binomial in the denominator and it's pretty simple. So what would make that equal to zero? x cannot equal eight. And when I have a binomial by itself, I like putting parentheses around it because then it tells me it's all or nothing. I can't factor an eight, I can't factor an x, it has to be eight minus x. Let's go ahead and factor that numerator. x squared factors one way, 16 is negative, so I'm going to have a positive and a negative. And what factors of 16 are six apart? That would be eight and two. Eight has to be negative because the six x is negative. So I have the quantity of x plus two over the uh, uh, the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 8 all over 8 minus x. Wow, that's pretty close, but they're not the same. Is there a way for me to make that denominator x minus 8? And the answer is yes. I could actually factor out a negative 1. So my numerator would be x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 8. My denominator, if I factor out a negative 1, 8 would be negative 8. X, negative x would be positive x. And I do now have a common factor that I can reduce. The quantity of x minus 8 over the quantity of x minus 8 is 1. Notice there is no addition and subtraction there. Everything in my rational expression is a factor. All right, so I have x plus 2 divided by negative 1. We do not leave it like that, so we're going to divide both add ends by negative 1. So I have negative x minus 2, and x cannot equal 8. So sometimes I like to work these problems across because they're fractions, and so it's really kind of nice. I have one, one line for my numerator and one line for my denominator. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to factor. My numerator, does anybody know what pattern that is? That is a difference of two squares. So I have one minus z times the quantity of one plus z over 
z minus 1. And again, I'm going to put that binomial in parentheses so I'm not tempted to reduce it where I can't reduce it. Wow, I'm noticing that I have a 1 minus z and a z minus 1. Those are opposites. Both of those add-ins, both of those terms are opposites of each other. So when I notice that I have opposites, what I'm going to do is I am going to factor out a negative 1. And let's see what happens. Numerator, the quantity of 1 minus z. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, rather than the denominator, I'm going to factor it out of my numerator. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 times the quantity of z minus 1 times the quantity of 1 plus z all over z minus 1. I now have common factor that I can go ahead and reduce. Before I do, I might want to do my excluded value. So my excluded value, if I go back to the beginning, I have a z minus 1 in the denominator. So my excluded value is that z cannot equal 1. All right, so back to reducing z minus 1 divided by z minus 1 is 1. And so I have negative 1 times the quantity of 1 plus z. I'm not going to leave it like that. So I have negative 1 minus z, and z cannot equal 1. Okay, let's do example D. I have two trinomials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor my numerator and factor my denominator. C squared factors one way. What factors of 12 are one apart? So I have a positive 4 and a negative 3. Denominator, C squared factors one way. Negative 20, what two factors of 20 are one apart? 4 and 5. I have a negative C, so my C is going to be five, negative 5, and, uh, and my uh, 4 is going to be positive. So now I'm going to look to see, before I factor, uh, before I reduce, I'm going to look to see about my excluded values. So I'm going to look at my denominator, and what would make that denominator equal 0? C cannot equal negative 4. C cannot equal 5. Okay, let's. do I have any common factors in my numerator and my denominator? And I do. The, C, the quantity of C plus 4 would reduce to be 1 over 1. And so I have C minus 3 over the quantity of C minus 5. C cannot equal negative 4. And C cannot equal positive 5. Five. Okay, example E. Do I have a greatest monomial factor in my numerator? And I do. It's 2, so I'm going to factor out a 2. My binomial is going to be, oh, I, uh, my binomial is going to be a minus 3. Denominator. My greatest monomial factor is 4a. 4a times what is 4a squared, that would be a. 4a times what is 12a? Minus 3. Going to look at my excluded values. So if I look at my excluded values now, I have an a. So a can't equal 0. I have an a minus 3. So a cannot equal 3. And I'm going to continue now and I'm going to reduce. All right, so we're going to work from left to right. 2 and 4, common factor of 2. a minus 3, I have a quantity of a minus 3 over the quantity of a minus 3. 
So my numerator is 1, my denominator is 2a, and my restricted or excluded values a can't equal 0 and a cannot equal 3. So let's go ahead and do a word problem. So in general, when you have a substance, if the ratio of its surface area to volume increases, um, it reacts faster with other substances. So we're going to simplify that ratio. So first let's find the surface area of this rectangular prism. Let's talk about the area of the bases. The bases are x squares that have a length of x on a side. So I have 2x squared plus the rectangular sides are 2x times x, and I have four of them. So there's four times 2x squared. My volume is base times height times, or length times width times height. So x times x times 2x. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this ratio. Numerator, 2x squared plus 8x squared. Denominator, 2x to the third. Numerator, 10x squared over 2x to the third. I'm going to work left to right, 10 divided by 2, 5. My x's, there are more x's in my denominator. How many more? 1x. So if I multiply across, 5 over x is my ratio. And let's go back. Do I have an excluded value? I have x's. I have x's in, uh, x's in my denominator. And so x cannot equal 0. And that is how you simplify rational expressions.